All right, welcome back to the Powers on Sports podcast, post-Super Bowl edition. We've had a wild Super Bowl uh, finish with the Rams beating the Bengals 23-20. Matt Stafford and company get their first ring. Sean McVay, Aaron Donald, MVPs of the Super Bowl, Cooper Cup with the game-winning touchdown. So as we get through the Super Bowl, we got the offseason of the NFL coming up here Starts immediately, a little bit of a break, and then the combine will be here in another couple weeks, and then free agency will be starting in mid-March. But before we get to all that stuff, we've got to talk to my man. we got two great guests this week. We're going to talk to Tom James. We're also going to talk to Peter Blake. So before we get to Peter, we are going to talk to my man Tom James, ESPN play-by-play, Florida Gulf Coast the award winner of two Edward Morrow Awards when he was a sports director in the TV business, and my good buddy, Tom James. Welcome back to the podcast, sir. Jay Powell, being able to share time with an absolute legend like yourself, (laughs) quite the honor. How was Valentine's Day with you and the missus? Uh, It was good. I was just getting back from the left coast. so not as, uh, shall we say, festivious as it maybe usually is, yep. but I think she understands. I got you. I got you. All right, let's get right to it. You were out in L.A. Super Bowl weekend and all the parties, all the celebrities, all the good stuff. You were out there calling the celebrity flag football game out in Malibu, I believe. I know you've done that multiple years uh, for, the, for the Super Bowl experience. Give the audience a little a little atmosphere of Los Angeles Super Bowl weekend. You ever heard the song "I Love LA"? <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I absolutely love the place. Um, being in Malibu for the uh, Celebrity Sweat, uh, the twenty second annual Celebrity Flag Football game was uh, was absolutely tremendous. Part of Super Bowl weekend, they played it at Pepperdine University. So this is Doug Flutie's team, okay, versus Tracy McGrady's team. Uh, Michael Irvin in there as a celebrity coach. Uh, Anthony Anderson from Blackish, also one of the celebrity coaches. Uh, A lot of fun. Pepperdine University. Anybody that goes to Pepperdine, how they get any studies done, I will never know. It sits up on a mountain overlooking the Pacific Ocean in Malibu. It is absolutely breathtaking so that game to call was a lot of fun for uh, Bally Sports West you know one of the great events as there are many uh, around Super Bowl weekend and and just to kind of soak all that up in beautiful weather completely sunny in the 80s low humidity what more could you want buddy that's it that's it and and those of you that are not seeing Tom you can check us out on the my YouTube channel Powers on Sports YouTube you're gonna see you can see our interview with Tom Tom is the quintessential California guy looking good looking guy with the, with the blonde hair. If you, if you drew up California guy, you would draw up Tom James, even though he's never lived in California, I don't think, but he is a USC fan. I know that he's a big USC guy, but he is your quintessential California guy with those beautiful blonde locks of yours. (laughs) <laughs> you're, you're too kind. I thought I fit the Florida uh, uh, stereotype pretty well, too. I'm a Florida kid, you know, born and raised. So um, those two states interchangeable outside yeah. of the politics, of course. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, all right. So all the celebrities are very, you know, just give the, again, the audience, uh, uh, how, how are all the celebrities and the former athletes very cordial with the fans, with just intermingling? How is that seen as far as just the interactions between all these former legends and actors and celebrities. Yeah, I would say 80%, 90%, everybody was very generous with their time for the fans, Um, you know, in and around Super Bowl time, it does get a little bit hectic for, uh, for a lot of these people, Um, but uh, very gracious uh, with their time. And there's a lot going on out there, as you know, Traffic in LA can wear on anybody's nerves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, you know, hundred percent, everybody very cool and uh, just a great weekend and, and capped off with a tremendous Super Bowl 
with a young quarterback giving way to the veteran quarterback who's finally getting his in Matthew Stafford. Uh, guy, what a, this guy has earned it. Let me tell you, Matthew Stafford has earned it. So yeah. congratulations to him and to the Rams. And I know everybody out in LA are, they're very excited to have the Rams back and on top. Your thoughts on Joe Burrow, the, the ascension that Burrow's made the first couple of years, oh, re retooling that franchise, making that franchise relevant relevant again in Cincinnati. Joe, don't change your wardrobe. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love this guy, his clothes. So that doesn't need to change at all. He did everything really that he could have done. Uh, you know, the Bengals to me with him, uh, I'm buying the Bengals long-term as long as they have Burrow and a good supporting staff. Uh, disappointing loss right down to the wire. Uh, nothing to really hold his head low about it all. For sure, for sure. All right, let's transition to the Olympics. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is Ocala, Florida, of all places, is a bit of a hotbed for speed skaters and Olympic speed skaters. Give the audience a little background of how did Ocala, Florida, of all places, become a hotbed for speed skating? Not one, not two, but three medal-winning speed skaters in Beijing from where? Ocala, Florida. Absolutely insane. Uh, this place, of course, known as the horse capital of the world. It's my hometown. Uh, we're very proud of the horses and the ponies up here. Uh, but who knew that we would breed all these great speed skaters Aaron Jackson, Brittany Bowe, Joey Mantia, all coming from Ocala. We don't have an ice rink, Jay Powell, in Ocala. <laughs> no? Okay, but what we do have is uh, we have great inline skating. And that's how these kids really came up. They, they were inline skaters originally wow. at a little skating rink behind a grocery store off the main drag of Silver Springs Boulevard in Ocala. And they got so good. That's a really competitive world there. They got so good that they decided to go to the blades, uh, go to the ice, and the rest is history. Joey Mantia, of course, won bronze in the team. Uh, Brittany Bow overnight, just several hours ago, won her first ever individual medal in the Olympics. She took bronze in the 1,000. And then uh, what a story between Bo and Aaron Jackson. Uh, Jackson won in the goal uh, in the 500. She won gold. Um, she had not qualified for that. Had a little mishap in qualifying. Brittany Bo had qualified. Bo gave up her spot, knowing that Jackson was easily good enough to get there. Gave up her spot to Aaron Jackson, and you talk about making the most of an opportunity. Aaron Jackson is bringing a gold medal in speed skating back to Central Florida. No, that's awesome. I know you, Tom. You work for the city, the the city of Ocala, and that that whole region down there. Um, are they planning a celebration, a parade? I'm sure they'll do something once the Olympics are over. What what are they plan? You got any any insight of what they're planning? Yeah, I've got some insight. It's going to be a big party downtown. I know that. We did it four years ago for them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there were there was one medal that came home from that. Uh, Bo won in a team competition four years ago. This time, now all three of them uh, will bring home medals a gold and two bronze. Uh, we will have a, a big event on our downtown square uh, in the coming weeks and months, whenever they are ready. Um, and it will be a great celebration. We're very excited about them. That's in awesome. Ocala. All right. So some, let's go from the good news to a couple, couple not so good news tips in, in the Olympics. Michaela Shiprin, as we're recording this, just DNF in her third event in the Olympics did not finish missed more gates, didn't, didn't finish the course. How, you know, from an athletic perspective, you and I have been around athletes all our life. How disappointing, how sad are we for a girl like Michaela with all the expectations. And she just, for whatever reason, hasn't been able to perform at the top, at the top of her, of her game at the biggest moment of the Olympics. 
Well, uh, completely inexplicable. I, um, I feel for her so much. She's a, a, a great gal, Michaela Schifrin. She, I will go on right. She's still the best in the world. Yeah. Um, she has just hit the skids at the wrong time. You know, she, uh, the slalom three times now that she has gone down and I want to compare it to something. Uh, for those of you old enough to remember the speed skater, Dan Jansen, the American yes. speed skater, Dan Jansen, who was uh, a favorite. Yeah. Coming into the Olympics back in 1988, absolute favorite to win the gold. He fell not only once, but twice. Yeah. Uh, he, he had been coming into that Olympics with some, uh, some family tragedy anyways, uh, fell twice and it was a heartbreaker and left the Olympics with nothing came back. The good news, he came back six years later in 1994 golden redemption. He won the gold medal. It's one of the great heartwarming stories that I've ever witnessed in the Olympics. Yeah. Now the good news for Michaela Schifrin that Dan Jansen didn't have, uh, I could argue that Jansen had more pressure when he came back in 94 because he had never won a medal in the Olympics. The good news for Schifrin is that she already has a vault full of gold medals uh, right. in the bank. Uh, so maybe not so much pressure for her, but if I'm her, I go off the grid. I sit on a deserted Island for six months. I go on a bender. I put the <laughs> skis away. Uh, she's only 26, man. Right. Okay. Right. Plenty of time to get her head, right. <laughs> Work out the kinks and decide, you know, remember who she really is. Right. she is an incredible incredible talent she's got it in her she's already proved it yeah. so i think that uh just take some time away and i think she can come back at, at she'll be 30 in the next olympics she still be in her prime absolutely no it's just it's just it's just tough because she was she's been hyped up by the american by the media here that she was the hope she was going to be the one who was really going to bring home several medals and for, like you said for whatever reason it just hasn't worked out your thoughts on the on the Russian 15-year-old Russian skating controversy. The, the young girl, 15-year-old, fails the drug test. The skater who's supposed to be the phenom, the next phenom of uh, figure skating. The, the, the IOC allows her to compete. She doesn't end up winning the gold medal or anything. She ends up falling in the long program. But just your thoughts about that whole process and allowing her to compete after she's failed a drug test. Huge believer in due process, but the bottom line is she failed a test. She shouldn't have been there. Bo bottom line, shouldn't have been there. And it's, it's pretty unfortunate for all the young skaters out there who give everything they can and everything they've got in all the years of training to do the right thing, to eat right, to sacrifice to get up earlier than everybody else and stay on the ice later than everybody else and do it right. And then for her and her support staff to somehow work in a banned substance that the substance was one that goes towards helping um, endurance for a four minute program. Um, and it can help you late in the routine. You know, if you want to pull off a quad late in the routine, you know, right. there's a chance that that can help you. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, she's 15, so I don't put it all on her. I put a lot of this on her support staff who are the ones who are guiding her. It's very unfortunate. Um, it's a good thing. She didn't win a medal. No. Yeah. I mean, it would have been a disgrace if they would have, because what they were going to do is they were not going to have a medal ceremony for the other two people that would have won medals had this girl won a medal. They weren't, which to me is totally unfair to the other two participants that have earned it cleanly and all that stuff. And the other thing about this whole story, Tom, is the Russians have a notorious history of doping and, and you know, drugging up their athletes for whatever, re, you know, for whatever you want to have, whatever they want to justify it as. And that makes it worse is when this, when the Russians just continue to have a history of doing this. Where there's smoke, there's fire. So it's yeah. not just an isolated case with, uh, with Russian athletes, sadly. Yeah, no, you're right. All right. 
We are getting close to March Madness. March is right around the corner, about another 10 days or so. You are a hoops junkie. You're the voice of the Florida Gulf Coast basketball program. You are all over it as far as the college hoops go. So let's talk a little college hoops. First off, give us a little update on Florida Gulf Coast and how they're doing and uh, as, as they head towards their conference tournament coming up here in a couple of weeks. Equal time to the men and women from FGCU. Yep. The men right now, red hot. They uh, just won their 19th game, five-game winning streak going deep into – uh, February now in the ASUN conference uh, schedules. Uh, they've had they had a little bit of a lull midseason in the early part of the conference schedule, but uh, Dunk City alive and well. Okay, got to win the conference tournament to get into March Madness. But this is a team that's pretty deep. Um, yeah, really like them headed into the ASUN tournament. The women uh, always good, almost always make the NCAA tournament. Um, have had some injuries. They've lost some players, but still very good. So the FGCU women uh, are are terrific. They could very well be back uh, in March Madness as well. Are, are, is is the sentiment that that the I know the women is the sentiment that the women are probably fairly comfortable to get an at large bid if they don't win the conference tournament. You can keep your fingers crossed. Uh, they lost to injury their very best player, Kirsten Bell, who was on watch lists to be uh, possibly a player of the year in, in women's college basketball or right up there. Uh, she has been out, may or may not return. Um, without her, FGC was struggled to shoot it very well. They right. just lost a rare home conference game uh, to Stetson this past week. So there are some questions there. Uh, I would have thought before that loss that an at-large was possible, an outside chance. Okay. Now, to me, they have to win the conference tournament to get in. Same with the men. I mean, again, again folks, remember most of these smaller conferences, if you're not in one of the power five conferences, you pretty much got to win your conference tournament in most cases to get it, to get a bid to, the, to March Madness. So a team like Florida Gulf Coast, even though they're playing great right now, they got to put the three games together or three or four games, however many they got to win in that weekend in that conference tournament to get to the big dance. Pressure. 100%. Pressure. Pressure. All right. We're going to talk a little buy and sell. I want you to give me a couple of teams that you like. The, you know, as, if you've been watching, uh, if you've been watching college basketball throughout the year, there have been numerous number one teams, a lot of parity. There has not been that dominant team or two like we've seen in years past. So, Tom James, give me a few teams that you'd like to buy, and give me a couple teams that you want to sell. All right, Jay Pal, I have picked out ten teams. 10 teams, and these are all big names, okay? These are all teams that have been in and around the top 10 throughout this season. Yep. I have six buys and four sells, okay? I was trying right. to go five and five, but there's a couple that I still really like, and I, I, I will have my final four picks in this as well. Okay, all right? all right, I like it. So I'll go buy and I'll go sell. My first buy is Duke. Okay. I like uh, the freshman Banchero uh, off the dribble. He's great. They've got a guy in the middle, Mark Williams, that we've seen all year. He's terrific. I, I, I have Duke, and I will call this a buy, but I think they, if Coach K falls short of the final four. I think they go to the Elite Eight. So you can make an argue that that's a sell, but uh, I think we'll see Duke at least to the Elite Eight. All right. Remember, Coach K's last year here is retired. Yep. Swan Song. So there'll be some. Added emotion is obviously as we get towards into March Madness with all that, all the stuff. The interesting thing came out this week. The the book, a book came out about the about the coaching hire, about the Duke administration wanted to hire Tommy Amaker. Coach K wanted to hire John Shire. Now there's a little conflict there potentially. So it'll be interesting to see how that, if there's any any lingering effects of that as we move forward as well. All right, next up. All right, I'm gonna give you a sell. Okay. I'm selling Auburn. Okay. Okay. Down in SEC country. I know they'll probably uh, run me out of town, but I'm selling Auburn. I think they're just a little too undisciplined for me. They rely way too much on Jabari Smith. Um, live and die. I, out in the second round. 
Auburn. Wow. wow. Out in the second round. You heard it here first. Wow. All right. Let me give you another sell. Kansas. Bill Self. Talent. Talent. Yes. Always talent. They lack consistency. And, and I just – Kansas, outside <laughs> of the fog, they just lack some juice. Okay. I never like the flow of their offense. Uh, sweet 16 team at best. At they, don't best. Have that elite play- they don't have that elite player, I don't think. They've got good players, but they don't have that one elite guy that Kansas typically has. Agreed. All right. I'll give you another buy. Arizona. Okay. My favorite team out West right now. They're probably going to be a number one seed, depending on how the Pac-12 tournament goes. Uh, As long as Zona is healthy, and they have been a little bit banged up, to me, best team out West. Final four for the Wildcats. Arizona to the final four. Yeah, remember, folks, all the turmoil with Sean Miller the last few years. They bring in the, the Gonzaga assistant coach. Tommy Lloyd, big international guy, really good assistant coach, has done a great job turning that Arizona program back around into title contention. So that's a good one there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you another buy, and it's also another Pac-12 team, and it's UCLA. They got the experience. Johnny Juzang, Tiger Campbell can run the point. Um, been a little inconsistent. They lost the, uh, the L.A. showdown with USC at the Galen Center Saturday night by three, but they will mesh down the stretch to me, much like they did last year. And I think UCLA gets to the final four again. So that, if you're keeping score at home, that's two Pac-12 teams I already have in the final four, in the final four. All right. Hey, I'm selling Baylor, the defending national champs, not healthy, not 100%. They've really lost a touch from last year. Baylor out in the Sweet 16. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to focus on a couple of Big Ten teams. Illinois, great seniors, uh, young guy, RJ Melendez, but boy, did they have a horrible loss to Rutgers last night. I'm selling Illinois, selling Illinois, sweet 16 at best for the Illini. Even with, However, the, big man, even, even with the big man in the middle? Come Even on. with the big man, yes. Okay. Okay, but however, I like Purdue I do a too. lot. I Deepest do too. team in college basketball. You could argue they are have the longest bench in college basketball. Uh, Ivy, Trevion Williams, very efficient basketball team. Um, I like them in the tournament. Uh, so I, I, I'm going to have them go into the Elite Eight, but I consider that a buy. I really like Purdue. Okay. All right. Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Buy or sell? Sell. Uh oh. Chet Holmgren's huge. The guy has a skill set like a guard. He's nearly seven feet. Nemhart, great assist man. I just think that they peaked last year. Okay. And I, I, I think Gonzaga, it's a little too cluttered for them out West. So I think Gonzaga is a sweet 16 team and then they're out. Okay. Okay. And I think I'm down to one team left. All right. I'm, I'm going to ask you a couple teams that are close to your heart. USC. They've had a good run. Is that a sweet 16 team? Or are they a, a lead eight team? Well, well, give me your assessment of, your guy, Andy Enfield at USC, done a great job turning that program around. Yeah, uh, terrific start to the season. A little bit uneven in the middle part, but a huge win uh, against UCLA the other night. They have they had a really tricky game against Pacific, which was uh, a little odd uh, middle of the season. But I think the Trojans can definitely get to the Elite Eight. Okay. If not further, but I, I would, if I were to fill out a bracket right now, depending on matchups, I'd probably go elite eight on USC. All right. Kentucky. Well, that was my last team that I was waiting to, uh, to go with here. Huge buy for me for Kentucky. I think this is the best Wildcats team. 
uh, since they went to the Final Four, when they got to the Final Four undefeated back in uh, 2015, lost to Wisconsin. Um, telling you what, they are stacked. Ty Ty Washington, uh, Jacob Toppin, Big Oscar, the double double machine down low. Yes. To me, to me, Kentucky of my Final Four teams is my biggest lock. Love the way the Wildcats are playing this year. Okay. I like it. I like it. Any, any teams from the, from the Northeast, Villanova, Providence is having a really good year. Anybody from the Big East that you like? Yeah, Providence has snuck up on some people, but I am a Villanova believer every single year. Uh, Villanova, to me, is the best team in the Northeast. Uh, so, Jay Wright always gets it done always has a disciplined team. They play together. They kids love playing for him. Do. Uh, Jay Wright's got Villanova going deep into the tournament too. And as you I know, like them as a final four team. Yep. As you and I both know, guard play is so critical. Le veteran, veteran guards tend to be the difference makers in these tight games. I like that. There's some good big men in the, in the country. There's Shishibwe. You got Coburn at Illinois. You got some guys out west that are, got some good big men. So I like that as well. I, I don't like it when it's nothing but a three point shooting contest. I like when teams have to have some balance of some inside and outside play, but some excellent, excellent uh, analysis there, Tom. Um, give me a final four. Who are you like in the final four and to cut down the nets? Well, there you go. So I've got UCLA and Arizona in the final four. Okay. Just gave you Villanova in the final four, and I've got Kentucky in the final four. I wasn't going to pick a national champion yet, but since you asked, Big Blue Nation, I think Kentucky's going to win it all. You got to give you got to give you got to give the Powers on Sports podcast the first the first coming of your national champion, man. <laughs> well, there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. A kind of a blue blood final four. Hey, that, that, that would be blue blood for sure with those with those teams for no doubt about it. Tom James, great work. Are you going to be doing the A-Sun tournament at all? You got the A-Sun stuff coming up? Yep, we'd be part of that. And, uh, hey, man, don't we live for March? That's it, man. The best three weeks in sports. Not even – it's by a wide margin. Absolutely. 100%. Tell everybody where they can find you online and, and, and on social media. Yeah, check me out at, at Tom James Live. That'll get you Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, check out my website, TomJamesLive.com. Well, keep up the great work, my man. You, you're the best, man. Uh, we will see you on the ESPN platforms here doing different things, I am sure. I'm glad you enjoyed a little Super Bowl uh, celebration out in California, out in Malibu. Again, you look if you're watching the, the the video interview. This man is the quintessential looking California guy right here, buddy. Good looking guy <laughs> with the blonde hair. And uh, keep up the great work, City of Ocala. Congratulations on all this, the Olympic success for the city. And I know you guys will throw a great party, man. We will see you soon, sir. We're very proud of him, Jay Powell. Always a pleasure, buddy. All right, buddy. All right, we'll talk soon. All right, yes, folks, sir. We'll, be, we'll be right back with Peter Blake of the Sports Web on the Powers on Sports podcast.